Hi everyone! I would also like to welcome you to our webinar. Today I will present revenue and expense deferrals which helps companies with amortization of maintenance and service related contract revenue and expense amounts over the life of the contract. The application can be configured to process transactions from any module of Sage 300 ERP including third-party applications as long as they support transaction analysis and optional fields creator module. Now let's see how does the application work. First it identifies transactions that should be processed. Second it defers revenue and expense amounts and creates schedule for recognition and finally it recognizes amounts as per the schedule. For example, we have an invoice on January 1st for $2,400. This is a transaction that will take place if $2,400 will be credited to your sales and debited to your AR control. Now what will happen in the revenue and expense deferral application? First, this amount will be moved from the revenue account to the deferred revenue account. Then a schedule will be created. In this case, let's say this is for one year, so the amount will be split into 12 periods and a correct portion of revenue will be recognized every month. That is, 200 will be recognized in January, February, March and so on until the entire amount is recognized. So without the revenue recognition, you will have 2,400 recognized in January, whereas with revenue and expense deferrals, you will have 2,400 split into the contract period. Let me show you this on example from Sage 300 ERP. Now first I will create a sell order for customer 1,400. I will create it as usual, no difference here. I'll select an item. Let's say we have a subscription for one year and the price is, let's say, 2400 Now in addition to the standard things, what I will do, I will enter several optional fields that are required by revenue and expense deferrals. Subscription starts on January 1st, 2013 and ends on December 31st, 2013. Deferment schedule is monthly and deferment method is a straight line. I will post the sale order. Now ship it all and create an invoice. Let's give a number to the invoice so it will be easy to identify. Let's say invoice uh, 0011 and post it. Now revenue and expense deferrals takes into consideration only the transactions that have already been posted in general ledger. So I will run the entire cycle, uh, which will take a few seconds, and then I will post the transaction in general ledger. Now what is important here is that my Sage 300 DRP has been configured in a way that optional fields flow from order entry to the general ledger. This is very important because revenue and expense deferrals will use this information to process the transactions. So I will just post the batch and go to the revenue and expense deferrals and simply run it. Mm -hmm. The application informs me that the deferral has been created. Deferral batch is the batch which transfers the amount from the revenue account to the deferred revenue account. Now let's see what has been done. In general ledger, now I have a new transaction from revenue and expense deferral which is transforming 2400 from my sales account, from my revenue account to my deferred revenue account. In addition to this, the application has created a schedule of how the amount should be recognized. The schedule actually depends on various settings. In my case, I want them to be recognized evenly, so the schedule has divided 2,400 into equal amounts throughout the year. And you can see that the first amount will be recognized on January 31st, the second amount will be recognized on February 28th. Let me log in the application with February 28th. Mm -hmm. Here. February 
Mm -hmm. Go to the periodic processing and uh, run the processing again. Now there is nothing to defer, but there are some amounts to be recognized. So if I go to general ledger, I will see there are uh, there are a new batch created. And let's see what is in this new batch. We can see in this batch that 200 is recognized on January 31st and another 200 is recognized on February 28th and like and like this the amount will be recognized in corresponding periods when required. Revenue and expense deferrals also allows you to use templates. If your contracts have standardized information, you can define a template and assign it to an item to speed up the order entry process. For example, let's say I have a one-year subscription for a template created in the application where I am saying that the contract starts on the date of the transaction plus one year. In this case, I have added this template to my item as an optional field. And now, when I am entering the order entry, I don't have to do anything additional at all, because when I select the item, the template appears just automatically. So I don't have to do any additional input. Here, all I have to do is to process transactions as usual. So I'll just enter it. I'll put quantity orders as 1. The amount will be 1000 in this case and now let's ship it all create an invoice and i'll just give an invoice id so it would be easier to recognize let's say invoice uh, 0013 and now let's post it this time the invoice date is february 28 let's go to ar and now post it mm -hmm. Now we will have this transaction in general ledger. So let's verify that in general ledger we have the optional field value for template. Post this transaction. Let's post it. Mm -hmm. All the steps that I'm doing is just standard Sage 300 DRP processing. There is nothing special here. Now I will go to a special place, I'll go to periodic processing and I'll run the process. So there has been, now we will see that there has been a deferral batch created and again no transaction to be recognized. Let's see what has been created this time. We can see the deferral batch which has deferred the 1000 and if I go to the revenue and expense deferral application. I will see that there is a new transaction added here and I will see also that transactions are deferred from February 28th till February 27 next year. And this is happening because I have selected a template and I have said that the transaction start date is the same as the invoice date and the transaction end date is one year after the invoice date. And the schedule has been created according to my settings. In this case, I have defined that amounts should be recognized equally in each period and I have defined in my setup that the beginning partial period should be skipped. That's why now the application has not cal calculated anything for February. Now let's move to report and see which are the reports available in the application. We have uh, in our revenue and expense deferrals revenue flash report which can be put into two types. Summary type and detail. Showing the amount, how much is deferred and how much is still pending to be recognized. Now if it's the summary type, um, let's print it. You can see you can see the amount, how much has been recognized so far and how much is still pending to be recognized. This information is available in two currencies if you are using multi-currency. The detailed format again shows the same information. It just shows how much was recognized during each run. Now you can see here that um, there was 2400 deferred and this was recognized. 
and next we have deferred the revenue report this one ages the unrecognized portion of transactions into four aging periods let's print this one for our transactions and see what's going on here mm -hmm. And again, you can uh, see that for this transaction, 400 is already recognized, another 200 will be recognized within 60 days, another 200 will be recognized within 90 days, and so on. And uh, here we also have uh, the audit log report, which allows you to see the transaction which was posted to general ledger during different processes. For example, I can select here by the source batch entry number. Let's select our transaction. And here we can see that this amount, just let's wait until it prints. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So here we can see that these amounts have been posted to our sales account, and these are the amounts that have been posted to our deferred revenue account. Now it's time to pass to the next product which is Backpack. Backpack facilitates and automates periodic backup operations. It provides you with an easy and convenient way to configure and schedule backups for multiple Sage 300 DRP companies. Now let me show you this in example. I have configured my backup uh, types for two companies. Some ink, let's say, and some LTD. All the backup settings are the same. These are daily backups, and I'm going to backup company data, system data. The application will do database dump for this, shared data. The application will copy the, co the company site and users folders from the shared data folder and reports. Backpack allows you to backup any file you want. For the sample company, I have chosen to backup Sage 300 ERP reports. I have also chosen to receive an email when the backup is completed. I can take either manual backups based on these backup types by just clicking the process button, or if task manager is open, the backups will start automatically when the date and time is due. Duplication will take the backup, it will create a compressed file, and it will copy this compressed file to a destination folder which I have specified. In my case, I have specified to copy this data to my backups folder. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see compressed files, uh, just... Uh, you can see compressed files here. It contains the shared data and database dumps and also the reports from multiple state 300 ERP modules. You can check the log uh, to view backups performed by Backpack. Let's check the logs here. And if you have uh, configured to receive emails, uh, you will also receive emails in your mailbox from the application. Here you can see them. I would also like to show you another important uh, feature of Backpack. This feature allows you to automate not only the backup, but also your integrity checks. You can simply define that you want to check integrity before the backup and the application will take the integrity check before the backup. If you want, you can choose to stop the backup, not to do the backup, if the integrity check has failed. Now let's pass on to the next uh, application, which is stock aging report. Here it is. The report ages the stock assuming that the stock has been shipped by using the first in first out method, regardless the costing method. The quantity is then multiplied by the average cost. You can choose which aging periods to select. For example, you can print the report aging your stock for 1 month, 2 months, 3 months and 4 months. The report shows the stock as of the printing date. Let's wait until the report prints. And here we can see that 
The report shows the stock as of the printing date and age is it according to your selection. Mm -hmm. This is all I, I plan to show you today. Thank you very much.